time. Yep. So you have a tree, you've got... I have a tree, I have a stuff. menorah, I have, um, I got it all going on. Right. <laughs> and uh, so uh, you guys have been singing and dancing all over the country. How is, how is the, what kind of, who, who started this and what kind of fun it is was that? It was her idea. <laughs> yeah, like Lucy. <laughs> and I wish she would think up something else because it's exhausting, <laughs> frankly. Um, I'm just boogieing down. Yeah, let's, you know, you're the one that brought all this on. It's good. Actually, I think it was your idea, Sharon. Uh oh, oh shit. <laughs> and I went, okay. And then we sat and organized it and it all happened. And then it, that was for the first Roxy show. And then it kind of snowballed on to... New York, Chicago, and now we're back to the Roxy. The addiction set in. I don't know. This is the funny thing, though. I was just talking to Ren about it, that um, I'm discovering something about myself in the last year where I hate to repeat myself. I hate to repeat the experience, you know? So um, the Roxy was really it's scary, fantastic. and it was its own it's thing. And then one. I guess the next one in New York built on it. Wasn't New York the next yes, one? Was. New York built on that. Mm -hmm. Then we went to Chicago and tried a completely different feel. Which was great. Yeah, that was Loved the whole the R and B feel. And I was yeah. reviewing it the other day and, and looking at the songs that really worked, which were very much in the vein of those musicians. You could tell oh. that the songs that they innately understood really rocked out. That was very interesting to me. It's like hmm. so when you go to a certain town and you want musicians that have the character of that town, you yeah. must choose music that suits them and you. That because, is really because interesting. Because some, some sort of magical coalescence, yeah. some Well, their culture's alchemy. right there, and they can enhance yeah. what and, they know. Yeah, and then you go on this magical carpet ride through yeah. their, their culture, you know, which was just unbelievable. It's such a priceless experience, and I would love to see them again, actually. But um, this next show... Since I don't have them and I don't want to go backwards, I have to do something completely different. And I want to really pare it down, like you said, and just get back to just like friends and family because a good number of these fans now are, you know, they're, they've become like a, a different kind of family. Yeah. Like a work family. Yeah. And I want to do That's something great. that is really so private almost. I know that sounds weird, but... Not at all. It's yeah, I, it won't, will not be slick. I, that's the only thing I could say right now. It will not be slick, <laughs> but it will be very personal. And, um, so the question, then, going back to what you said, if you're doing it at the Roxy, what culture of L.A. would you want to pull into it? Or is it they're so diverse you could do whatever I, I you want? I think I'm going right back to it's like my living room. It's not, I don't know about L.A., it's just like, this is my... Oh, what do you sing here? Like, we're this, singing right now. Right, this is, like, my backing singers are going to be Tony Award winning Marissa Jarrett Winoka. Oh, that's so Her great. husband, Big Judah, who my, who my son's wow. named after, and awesome. Daisy, my daughter. So it's, oh, this is not blast. professional, but it's going to be really personal. Oh, well, that's kind of like what they had. It used wow. to have in Hollywood, at George yeah. Gershwin's house. Everyone would come. This over. is like come, come over to George you know, Gershwin's yeah. house. And do you know what? Yeah. Mm. 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 This house actually used to uh, belong to a, a famous um, lyricist from the fifties. That's right. Actually, hang on. No earlier than that, like uh, yeah, thirties, forties, and fifties. Didn't you? So at some party, someone was on the piano and you were singing along to Christmas carols or something? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, remember maybe. That? <laughs> like, that's how I just see you, you know, that sort of idea. Yeah, that, of, that, 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 okay, exact you know? that kind of feeling. I wanted it to be like the Bing Crosby Christmas special, but it'll be a little bit crazy because of who we all are. Because yeah. it's you. Yeah. Yeah, be, the, you know. yeah. Bowie will walk in. <laughs> well. You'll do the little drummer boy. I can't promise, David. <laughs> That's lovely. Well, I, what I love about your shows is that there's a, your personality and your emotion comes out in your songs, and you take us all on a journey. People connect with you anyway in your music, you know? Well, this um, time... So this is going to be even wilder. Yeah, yeah. but I, I have no idea yet what I'm singing, but I'm meeting with my musical director next week, and I just... Uh, I don't Let's know. This is come on into the living room. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting point. You say her personality comes out in her music. What's coming out when you're in your dancing? Is that you? Whips and ticklers and... 
Well, I definitely have a whip at home. We all know that. <laughs> know. Um, but there's definitely the wild Renee that, you know, that sort of balances my... Fixin. Yeah. I love, I love sexy clothes. I love all that stuff. I love to dance. I've always loved to dance. So it's great. I mean, I'm not used to whipping so much, you know, <laughs> in front of... In public. Yeah, you know. Actually, I don't really... It's just... Yeah, do I whip? I mean, I'm, oh, whatever. Do you whip? <laughs> Let do it I whip. really whip? Ahead, Let it whip. Whatever, really. like, you know, if I'm trying to be it silly. It's exactly like you see on stage. If I'm being silly, then yeah, you know, the, the, there will be whipping, you know? But it's just a person, part of it. You should ask some of the Xena stuntmen about Renee and meeting out punishment. She knows how to do it just fine. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, you know, I do like dancing. But I haven't seen the... Uh, yeah, you know, the last one was different. It's not really what I was expecting. I thought the Let a Whip would be similar to what we did at the convention. I don't know why, but it just felt different. Yeah. There was just a sense of soul and groove going on, and the dance you, felt different. Yeah. yeah, I told you afterwards that your dancing was entirely different than the first two shows. It just felt that way watching it. It was just fun. It's fun yeah. being up there. And yeah. with the, the, uh, I love that Ray Charles number. Oh, my gosh. Still listen to that song and just go, oh, Baby, what I say? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, every time I hear it, I just get transported. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Yeah, it's a good one. With the diamond ring. <laughs> that was fun. So it's been uh, yeah. a year at least since we guys were together. It's been a year and, and a half. Uh, I was pregnant. So it's been over a year and a half. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize it'd been yeah. long. You, well, this is one of the reasons why <clears> you guys <throat> have been all over the world, all over the country, doing all kinds of projects. So I thought we'd cover a bit of it. Uh, recently, one of you played Wonder Woman and the other Indiana Jones. Who Tell played me. which? Well, I didn't play Wonder Woman. Uh, I <laughs> certainly don't remember being Harrison Ford. Uh, <laughs> so you did. You've done Harrison Ford a couple of times. This was a little different, yeah. I wasn't playing the male version of Harrison Ford. This was sort of the, uh, the lady who goes on an expedition similar to Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is it's a whole different character. Genesis, Genesis Code? Genesis Code, yeah. So I played a woman who basically is trying to prove that there is existence out there that's greater than our own physical being. That's what she's doing. She's trying to, to show her ex-husband that, um, that there, he should have faith. He should have faith in God, spirituality, you know? Is okay. this, um, so you filmed this in Bulgaria. How did you wind up getting the part? And uh, is that the crux of the movie? Or I know there's a, you have a husband. Is there another male lead? Um, um, the other, well, the male lead is really Tim Decay, and he plays my ex-husband, which was so much fun to do, because there's so many elements, you know, that are sort of personal that you just want to use, you know, you know what I mean? In acting, like, you bring out real feelings, you know, and, or you make comparisons to your own life, and so it was just so much fun to transcend the uh, formula that the Sci-Fi Channel has and make it something that's more like a personal dram drama or comedy between us, so I really enjoyed doing that. And, um, and it just sort of came about. So I was talking to the Sci-Fi Channel and said I was interested in doing some things and was giving them ideas that I had because I like to sort of get involved in the whole process. And they basically said, mm, we've already done this or we're, we already have something in production. And then it came up and it was just the right fit. And I was willing to go to Bulgaria for a month with the kids. That was the big thing for me. So I've always been hesitant about taking my kids on location, you know. But? Uh, it was pretty good. You know, we were in Bulgaria. Iris became very sick, so she was in the hospital for three days. Oh, no. In a hospital where they don't speak <gasps> English. So it was kind of trying. I was spending the night in the hospital and then going to work uh, all day. But, you know, it's funny how uh, your adrenaline... Was your mother there? My, thankfully, my mom was there. Oh, my God. You yeah. must have had a heart attack. It was pretty... It was, it was stressful. It was yeah. stressful. But, you know, your adrenaline as a mother is keeps you going. And then I so loved the project that I wasn't tired at all. You know, you just keep pushing through. Did you come um, home and collapse? No, but it's funny, the third day I had all my dialogue and there's about eight pages and it's just my talking. It was just like monologues of information and I don't know how they'll put it together, but I was worried I wouldn't know, remember the, uh, the lines after three days of really not sleeping much. Oh! And I, and I really, I was so lucky because I finally kept thinking, there was a part of me that kept looking to my own spirituality and it was about spirituality anyway, going, just let it go, you know, let it happen. And I did and then suddenly the words would come, you know? But each mm. time I'm like, fuck, you know, excuse me. Grace. So, I was like, grace. Yeah. you know, and the other actors were all talking and it was really distracting. I'm like, yeah, let the grace of God just happen. Let it da, 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 happen. And, and um, that was a huge lesson for me as an actor. Yeah. That you know it, you know. You don't have to work so hard. 
it's in you. Don't worry it's about it. It's in you, like yeah. That. I think you mentioned that a bit when you did the play on stage. Either one of the characters, or maybe you were talking to me before. Well, you forget, though. Yeah, forget. <laughs> yeah keep, keep reminding yourself, eh? Yeah. <laughs> There's some divine intervention in here yeah. somewhere, you know. Yeah. And I found that to be really true. That's cool. That's really cool. It's fun. And how did you wind up being Wonder Woman? This was a... Oh, I can't remember. I don't know. Somebody rang up. No, I did. Um, oh, the Justice League. Justice I did. Yeah, yeah the voice that's of right. Wonder Woman that's for the right. Justice League. But uh, that's cool. Well, you know, somebody rings your agents and says, "Are you available?" And I wanted to. I'd never felt that I had done that form of performance very well before. I had a taste of it on. Um, was it Zena? the animated Herc and Zena and <laughs> on Simpsons? But oh, yeah. they were such. I was so new to it, I didn't understand that type of performance. So I did it a couple more times with Justice League and for Dragonlance. Cool! And, um, and it was great. I really enjoyed the experience. But it's very short. You've got to remember that you go in there for an hour and a half. Wow. Two hours, maybe. You're done. Wow. And then it takes another year and a half before they animate it and probably a few more months before they put it out there. And um, you've kind of forgotten all about it in the yeah. meantime. Well, you could ask you me a week yeah. later and I would have forgotten yeah, yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, so do uh, it, I remember on the animated one on Herc and Cena that you only had about maybe one chance to get it. Was it similar to that? You know, when you think of you're doing a movie in an hour and a half, you're really only doing it one time through, right? Um, you, yeah, you get a, a few times. Oh, okay. A few times. And, and you just have to trust the director to say, yes, that's what that's you right. want because... They have the image and their, you yeah. know, how, how the uh, shot, the artwork's going to come out. And yeah. you can't it's see. You have nothing in front of you to draw <sighs> so on for information. Hard. And no other actors. Doesn't work. And no other actors. That's really tough. Yeah, so you're very often with these things. Um, oh, wait a minute. Um, so you were going from no actors. Yeah. There were no, no actors actor around. There. No other actors. No, other, no, there were no actors. <laughs> <laughs> Get wow. that <laughs> yeah, because there's nothing, else, nothing else for you to draw on. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and no there. other actors. There's no other actors there. <laughs> and no other actors. That's right. <laughs> oh shit! I, I can't question. remember well, where we're going. Maybe think of something though, because you've done so much music lately, right? You're listening. You're actually working in a different realm completely. Did that help you doing the animation then? Because no, because I did all the animation way before I oh, started oh, okay. singing. Oh, right. It's yeah. wild. Even before duets. And there were no actors there. <laughs> and no actors. Yeah, you're just, you're totally alone in a booth oh. going, oh, did I say that oh, right? No. I'm, I'm wondering what a director does on an animated feature. I Thank mean, you deliver a line. I mean, they know this. You, I mean, do you see the whole script? Well, you have the script, but you don't know what the other characters look like apart from some comic strip. Maybe you get a page of comic strip, yeah. and um, you don't know how, what their voice sounds like. Yeah. You... Do you want to go? Are we picking that up? That door? Um, we are yeah. picking that up? Hey, Warner, there's a couple of doors between us and the kitchen. You want to? Yeah. They're just swing doors. Yep, shut every door you can possibly find. <coughs> one of, there's another one on this side, too, if you go around there. In fact, this is a big sliding door in the cavity. Oh, this right here? Shut the, the mirror? Not there. No, shut the one there behind you, yeah. yeah and then in here. Okay. <laughs> Shouldn't expect you to find your way around there. Well, is that door shut? Yeah. Okay, let's pull this, shall we? Locked down, yeah. <laughs> this is the panic room. <laughs> 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 the next nuclear explosion. Are they sitting in the same spot? Any so there, the, what does a director in an animated feature actually do? Give you line, you know, descriptions? Some, and sometimes the director will give you a line reading. Like, no, I want you to say it more <laughs> like this. And you just do it because wow. they know uh, who's coming up behind you. You know, they, they are holding the performances of all the other actors in their head. Wow, Even if they haven't been done yet, they, they have to be the continuity behind every character, I think. 
Now, some of them actually, don't they do the voices and they end up keeping the voices in the oh, movies? I don't know. I've heard that happen before. Yeah, I, I think Wonder Woman's actually going to be that man who's You're directing. Right. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to go, yeah, no, nah, that voice doesn't work. I can do that. You're right. Yeah. That's funny. And Dragonlance, um, uh, you've talked a bit about uh, they wanted a specific voice from it. Did you change your voice from it or do you using your real voice? Well, you know what happened? Accent? No, with Dragonlance. She's supposed to be like Native American or something, so wow. I don't know how to do a Native American accent. And the, somebody was trying to show me, but it just sounded, you know, weird coming out of me. Yeah. I, I can't even do it. I can't even do it. I've never heard it before, so I have no reference for it, and it would just be disrespectful <laughs> and, and, you know, don't do that. So eventually, I realized what they were asking was, can you just do the Xena voice? That's what that we want. Really? Yeah. And the Xena accent. If you can't actually be uh, Gold Moon or then uh, Native American, then uh, can you be Xena? <laughs> and they were too shy to ask. They were sort of guiding, try it in a bit more staccato. Like this. <laughs> they want to be more flowing. Uh, you just want me to do Xena, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Would you just do Xena? That's so funny. And they couldn't ask that? Oh, did they want a sense of timelessness? Is that what they're going for? No, I don't know. I, I don't know. They Some, just liked her Xena voice. They, they <laughs> was like, yeah, that's what we're and paying for. Gold Moon would be, <laughs> Gold Moon's a strong character, I gather. She's, uh, uh, I've not read those pieces. So I know, I you know, know, to be honest with you, I didn't know anything about it. I was just yeah. like, wanted to do a favor for my friend George, who I knew during the Xena and Hercules days. George Strayton. Oh. And um, I was like, yeah, totally, George, I'll come and help you out. That's all I thought it was. And now I hear that it's just some worldwide movement. And about 20 years ago, it was like tens of thousands of people were into this. But I had a friend that was into it, yeah. It started out kind of a Dungeons yeah. and Dragons things, became books, became, you know, online. It just, it's huge. It's absolutely right. huge. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an incredible <laughs> world. That's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Where there's either voice. Um, voices. Ghost Town. Uh, you were hired to play a man. Yeah. Um, hired to play a man, but they just, well, actually not to play a man. I was hired, they wanted to hire me for something else, and then the role wasn't right, so they offered me um, a man's part, and said they would switch it to a woman. So I said, sure. And then, yeah, and it was all right, you know. The, the experience was... Um, just sort of getting my feet wet again, especially with being a mom as well and on location, this whole thing. It was the first step into going somewhere. And um, where'd you go? To North Carolina. Oh, again, that's I was right. a yeah, month yeah. away. I just don't want to leave my kids, you know? It just it kills me. So, so yeah. yeah. So, anyway, but I tried it out. Miles came out for a while, and Iris was there the whole time. And it was really easy. It was easy to be on a set, you know? Because it's just like old hat and just sort of look around and go, oh, yeah. And, you, and they were um, pretty pretty independent as well. It's a, it was a low budget. So you just, you know, you could just sit back and go, oh yeah, I know what you're doing. <laughs> I know what you're experiencing. You know, I'm talking about all the ins and outs of trying to pull it together. <laughs> so she's like, you're telling me. I know. La -da -da. La -da -da. Years of diamonds and guns. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But they were further ahead, you know, because I was still working on some sort of post-production. And um, further ahead in that they had the money for post-production, where I think I was still raising money for post-production. And, um, but it was all right, you know. It was, it was two directors directing, which is a little weird for me. I don't like that. Uh, yeah. It's so frustrating. Did they ever have a conflict? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, so of course the they do. I mean, they have two visions, and they're trying to complement each other. One's more technical, one's more artistic. And it just, um, it, sometimes there's a lack of communication, you know. Well, but, it, but, you know. You don't have to do Did anything. you ever, now this was a Western. Were you ever a cowgirl as a kid coming from Texas? Not really. I was a city girl. <laughs> you were. A city I have girl. to confess, you know, I really was a city girl. Um, yeah, but the tomboy element of Gabrielle is still sort of in me, and so that sort of played into Little Jack, and and then like the vicious, like there's a she was just mean spirited, you know, in some ways, and I just sort of explored. Well, like, well okay, you know, I came up with ideas. It was just they were mean, you know, like I hold the woman. I said, why don't I hold the woman while you beat her? You know? <laughs> but 
like I had nothing you, to do. This is horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> But Your it's, friend. I know, and it's <laughs> she's pretty dark at times. Well, you're you're not is. personally dark, but, but you remember you used to read all that psycho killer stuff because of hope, though. I did it because it was hope when I was playing hope. Oh, it's hope's fault. No, yeah, it was hope's fault. You did not. You, didn't that. you do it at school? Yeah, no, not at school. But there was another thing I was doing. Oh, when I play, usually because of roles, I always like to investigate the roles. And there was something. Um, I can't. I, there was one where I was taken by a serial killer. Why did FBI the untold stories? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know, oh, right. and I was yeah. working with this great actor, and I just yeah. again I like to know, you know, I like to find more to do. And the thing with Little Jack is she was so uh, there was just there was nothing for her to do in the scene. So I sat there and I was like, okay, you know, what are you gonna sit there? You know what I mean? I mean, I'm thinking to myself, Good what am I you. just gonna sit here? And yeah. they knew they wanted me on camera. Like they were starting to get that they should use me more. They're trying to find ways to put me in stuff. And so they kind of sat me down next to the woman. So I thought, well, hell, heck, you know, why don't I hold her down, you know? And then, you know what I mean? That's fair enough. So you can't, we you call it having an egg on your face. Yeah. No actor wants to be in the back of somebody else's shot going, doo, 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 doo. Yeah. got nothing Making to faces. do. Yeah. And because that's not real either. If, no. you, if you're there, you've got an attitude, you've got something not, to yeah, say exactly. about the scene. Yeah, yeah. So that was my contribution in that scene. So it's just, <laughs> again, I don't know. That makes she sense. didn't come out as dark as I thought. She, you know, she might at times. It, it uh, she wasn't fleshed out, really. Would you like to play? Would either one of you like to play a serial killer, like you know, like the Dexter character? I don't think I would. I don't know. Would you like to? No, I turn down roles that are just <laughs> in in shows that I I just find too yeah you know, mean spirited, because I don't want to put that out in the world, which is not to yeah. say I wouldn't play a serial, you know, a one-off some, but I don't want to be in a series that's about hideousness. Criminal Minds is, uh, I've seen two episodes in a row now. That's a really tough show. It's well done. There's no doubt about it, but I'm, ha I'm, I'm not going to watch it again. Oh, yeah. It's just so... Oh, wow. Well, I watch, yeah, I watch a lot of crying shows, but yeah. not but scripted drama, <laughs> because yeah. it gives me too much pain. They keep calling me in for that too, Criminal Minds. It's funny because they don't really know me at all, so they call me in to read. And I've, and I've come to the idea that, you know what, maybe I need to learn something here. And I go in and I, and I, the parts have been so heavy. And even though they're, I haven't gotten them because of whatever reason in the end, you know, and age, or it was like age stuff, one's too young, one's too old, blah, blah. But, um, but just to, to really connect with these Hor horrible victims was <gasps> oh my gosh well that's you one know? thing court tv wow. is actually pretty divorced from the actual crime yeah it's, it's when you back, watch you know. yeah or on a and e or right. dtms so, or, like or bio part. you like the analysis no I, I, yeah i want to i want to see bad guys brought to justice yeah that's what <laughs> it is i want to see that's cool yeah huh wow that's why you were watching. I wondered why you were, what you were getting at. I don't know. So yeah, yeah, right. It's something satisfying about that, particularly when it's like some doctor kills his wife and covers it up and stuff. You want to see the rich guy go down and for being a slime ball, and wow. often they do it for like, or really for a few, maybe a couple of hundred thousand dollars. Sometimes they do it for like thirty thousand dollars. Go and murder some poor human being who never did them any harm, and you just go. I want you to go down for this. I want to. Wow! Yeah. And do they? I mean, they actually yeah, so yeah. Far. Well, the ones that I'm watching are, you know, wrapped up cases. So it's about nice. forensics or the cops being the heroes. You know. Wow. Are you into the Drew? Uh, is it Patterson Peterson, the latest one that's on there? With oh the, yeah. Well, the, that, that's the king. Well, Scott Peterson was king, but I'm a little horrified that you know, Lacey Peterson, Stacy Peterson, they actually have a daughter called Lacey Peterson. You just know that the Peterson family and. Wow. Uh, up in Marin County or wherever they, I oh know they're from San Diego, aren't they? But Lacey Peterson's parents are reliving their misery through this other family. It's just, it's just a horrible. Um, I'm not the Peterson family, sorry, but Lacey's birth mother. Um, it's just ghastly. Hmm. And on a brighter note, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> moving away from <laughs> serial killers. So satisfying. To Larry David and Curb Your Enthusiasm. There so. you go. A little more recent. That like fun. Uh, I read that was fun. When someone was describing that show, they said, I guess there's a scripted outline, <coughs> but then it's improv internally. And I wanted to know what 
what that experience is like working with him and what parts were you're, you're right that it is it is loosely scripted and you have to uh, you know you have to make sure that you end up at a certain point from A to G by the end of the scene and you can throw something out there and Larry will either love it and take it and, and include it or he will kill it dead you know right there and, um, Meaning that he just doesn't let it go any further, or you cut and then you start over again. Uh, um, oh, he was so good. To, uh, um, oh, he was so good to me, and he was so you know they just <coughs> kind of allowed me to <laughs> waffle. I know, and I was respectful of their pro process, so I'm not of throwing n n complete rubbish in there. I hope, but um, <laughs> like the the whole thing about so you're a Jew that was all from me. <laughs> So you're a Jew, because you know <laughs> you know, there are no, almost no Jewish people where I come from. So to me, they're always like this mythical creature. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. So and he seemed anyway, like he it was really funny. You. you know what I mean? Didn't he kind of seem a little smitten? I thought I don't know. He was good. Well, I didn't know. I mean, poor guy. That his marriage actually was breaking up. I didn't oh, know. Didn't so his, I didn't know that. He, I guess, knew. Um, because it was just the next week that it was made public, so he was right oh. in the maelstrom at that time. Yikes. Yeah. So, um, I wonder why that was on the show. It seems so odd. It makes such a great couple on camera. I yeah. It's an odd element to put into their show, you know? Yeah, I, I, yeah and I, I saw people like TV Guide was going, you know, this is where Cheryl leaves Larry, and this is where we leave the show. As if, oh. I mean, they were hurting. They were, people were really hurting because Cheryl, Cheryl left him. Mm. Now he's just a horrible old curmudgeon on his own. I don't want to know about him. Yeah. Oh. But it's like, well, he's gotta grow. Get, off, get over it. Plus, this guy is an artist. He's not, he's, he's not interested wow. in being a monkey Doing for the network. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He... Artists do what they do, yeah. and you can't stop them. And he's I know. in a situation it's where he can. It's popular. Yeah, it's and he's acclaimed. It's pop and it's fascinating. Yeah, it's fascinating to to watch somebody uh, put themselves put real life on the line. So uh, a fair amount of that dinner table, the the date that was improved. Yeah, the we I was had a couple of other. I had one other scene which got cut out. But you understand it, you know, when you see the episode, because I wrote in my blog, like, I, I thought it was all about me, 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 this whole thing, because every day that I was there, it was all about me, Aww. the scene where they were talking about me or whatever. But wow. so much is going on in this episode, because Cheryl leaves Larry, she's on the plane, and she's having a terrible time, and he won't listen to her, because he's there with the TiVo salesman. Yeah, and, and the black family are there, and uh, what else, the restaurant, was that sandwich? Palava part of that drama. No, the fa the friends are choosing between Cheryl yeah, and I mean, Larry. There's so there's so on. much going on. And that was kind of heavy stuff, you know, for yeah. Kirk. Yeah, it was, good it was like that was an instant classic. I reckon I'm so, I'm I'm lucky, yeah. man. I get to. I was lucky I saw you because I watch it when I can, and I I guess I heard that you might be on it, but then or you weren't going to be on it. Everyone was confused. I didn't know. The, was. the yeah. date was so confused. We watched and, it anyway. Yeah. Like, oh. yeah. And then Ted Danson yeah. popped up at the end. Ted Danson, yeah, what a great guy. Uh, the writers told me that everybody loved it, that I thought that Ted Danson was an ass. That was oh. so funny. Did you make that up? Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought you might have made that one up. Yeah. <laughs> I remember hearing a lot oh. in there, and I said, that sounds like Lucy and I can't Doesn't it really? What it was. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah all, it the way that you say it yeah. is you. Exactly. The I way that you, you get there is you. Yeah. That would have been your sort of sense of humor, plugging it in, just to be uh, funny, you know? <laughs> I figured that would be funny. So yeah, because who doesn't like... I know, everybody likes like, Ted. Exactly, yeah. 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 That's Although so he's doing an incredible wow. job on damages. Oh, really? Being an absolute bastard. Oh, he's a wow. good actor. <laughs> he's fabulous. He's a fine That's actor. A, it's a great show, yeah. I haven't seen it. Oh, what's that on? Uh, FX, right? FX, right. Mm. Saving Grace is on TNT, Damages on Effects. Glenn Close, yeah. Glenn Close. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, you know, yeah. Holly Hunter, Glenn Close, so many. Cars Holly Hunter's doing that new show. Saving yeah. Grace. Oh, that's yeah, really good, yeah. Really, yeah, so much good stuff going and on. And Laura Sandra Como, I'm so yeah, thrilled to see her in such a great show. Is she on the same one? She, she is, she plays the best friend, and I'm watching and Saving Grace, oh, you'd like that show. I know that. I would like that show. You'd be good on that, yeah. 
think it was her it's glasses it. that threw me. I have to see it. I read. I didn't read a very good review it. about it. So. Oh my God! Oh, it's so watch it interesting. Yeah. And mm. good and beautiful. Really filmic. Really. Oh really? Gritty and yeah. Mm. Huh. Great oh. acting. And now we have to plummet back into schizophrenia because you did Boogeyman Two. Yeah. For Rob. For Rob. For Rob. Yeah. And how did that come about? How did you know that movie was being done? Um, I heard about it, and I um, I was fascinated with this woman who was dealing with schizophrenia in her life. That her mother was a schizophrenic, mm -hmm. and then she was always afraid of being schizophrenic. And it took me back to this um, mm. when I was a kid. I played something where I was a schizophrenic for this foundation, and all these uh, parents really affected me because they were hurting so much with their kids mm -hmm. going through this treatment. Um, that's what affected me the most, more than actually watching the patients and how they functioned. So um, to think that this was a woman who basically felt the same way as all those parents did, connected Toward with her me. charges. Yeah, because this woman had to deal with the, um, the, the illness, yeah. you know. So anyway, anyway, so I immediately connected with it, and I thought, that would be fun, and it films in Los Angeles, and um, and it was a modern day piece because the ghost town was again a different period, yeah. and I was sort of looking for things that are current, and yeah, it was good. It was really fun to do. Is it? I was it, the old lady. It's a lady slasher movie, right? Well, it doesn't feel like a slasher movie at uh -huh. first. Uh -huh. It felt like a normal drama, and then I think the last day I was on, everyone started. At least I died, and uh, people started dying, you know? And then I was like, oh, yeah, I'm in a horror film. <laughs> if you watch Tobin Bell walking across the parking lot uh, with two syringes in his eyes, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's what we're doing. You know? We were supposed to do something visually. I don't remember what it was, maybe just meat, but you wound up being in horror makeup uh, for the whole yeah, day. Yeah, which looked fantastic. They um, put blue veins on my skin, and it was peeling away because I'm electrocuted. So I went home that, that night like this, because I knew that I knew Iris was asleep. Because oh. I wanted to see what Judd would do, because he hates horror films, you know. <laughs> so uh. I went, and he was just mortified. Yeah, uh. I'm sitting down next to him, honey. Hi, honey. Uh. <laughs> and I was um, I was begging them to let me take my head, because I get decapitated. I said, please let me take my head home. You know, <laughs> that's just so mean. I'm, uh. I'm gonna put it in my refrigerator. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that horrible. The door. Wouldn't that be great? And they said no, and I said, well, can we at least put it in the craft service refrigerator as everyone's coming through? And they said, well, we have to wait till it wraps, and then maybe we'll do it. Lucy, I don't think she holds do. down women while they're being beaten. She wants she to put a head in the refrigerator. In her. But I, I love horror films. This is not the real I know. I <laughs> no, won't go to her house because I'm afraid I'm going to end up covering a lampshade. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know, I was thinking about it, and I loved horror films as a kid, you know? Someone's asking me why. because it was such a thrill, you know? I loved the idea that I could sit here and be on this journey, and I knew it was perfectly safe. And then, um, do you get Chiller, sta that cable station, Chiller? No, oh, yeah, it's pretty good. I've kind of outgrown it. I don't like it as much as I did as a kid, you know. Me neither, but they're they're a little cheesy, so they're really good. Oh. You know, like the old stuff that we used to watch when we were kids. The 70s. So it's okay. I quite like being a little bit scared, yeah. but not a lot. We just had this wild library of horror films, so. I would go in, I wouldn't really even know the titles, but I'd put them in and start watching them. And then I would start to figure out how they did it. Yeah. So then it actually detached me a little more from the, the gore. Did yeah. you ever get a fright? Sometimes. And put in a video that, that you know, nobody meant you to see? Yes. <laughs> Something adult. Yes. <laughs> you go, ha, ha, ha. And yet somehow I... Well, that's where I got <laughs> it's the... It's so compelling. Yeah, I have to watch exactly. it. Exactly. I did that. That's what, well, that was my joke on Diamonds and Guns, because my character put, you know, she's sur channel surfing, and then a porn comes up. She's like, oh, you know, porn. Like, no big deal. So that was my own little joke about how nonchalant, you know. <laughs> I thought that was funny that she was so nonchalant to me. I was sorting someone's <laughs> tapes, an unnamed person, <laughs> and I put in, it was... I put in a tape, I can't even say what the other ones were, but I put in a tape and I'm watching this like Victorian 17th century woman. Really? Um, and then it progresses and a lot of things are going on under Is it the an, hoops. So it's not an old fashioned movie? This was a no, this was a period porn. Period porn. porn. Period <laughs> porn. Oh. Ah. When was it made? Probably in the ah. 80s, huh? 70s, 80s or something. I've been out here 20 years. Uh, I'm going, I'd say, yeah. That was uh, maybe around the 80s. Was it late badly 80s? shot <laughs> and not trashy? Um, I didn't watch all that much of it. I didn't know what category to do. I was just there. You didn't know where to, <laughs> where to file it. I didn't know where to file it. Oh, so. it oh, that's funny. 
unexpected mm -hmm. things, somehow you're going to be unboxed. You have gone back to Vancouver and shot a bit more Battlestar. Yeah, I get uh, unboxed. That's about all I can yeah. say. They're very secretive about this stuff. It was nice seeing the seeing your old old buddies. It had been a while. It was really nice, actually. I um. Uh, everybody was is very relaxed. Unlike us in the run up to the end, because we all got more tens. We were so excited too. Do you know what we're I mean? Excited, but I think people like the crew was very afraid. They'd had this job for a long time, and um, <coughs> I don't know. I, by the end, I was so yeah, right, incredibly was... tired that I didn't. I was out of my mind. Mind you, that was that crazy. The, the end was crazy. Four units going at the same time with those two episodes. Yeah. yeah it's so a lot that was more a physical show. It's a lot more physically wearing. Yeah. I mean, you guys were outdoors in the least bit of clothing in the craziest weather. No other TV and actors yeah. ever had to do anything quite like that. And it was that. Rob's episode. We really wanted to get it right for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't you think? We really wanted to come together and be the best. And yeah. that was probably where some of the pressure came in. But overall, weren't we just really excited? I mean, we seemed so pleased with every episode. Everyone's, every single one in the sixth season stood up, you know? I thought, I thought it, we did a good job. Wow, that's, that's what you remember? Yeah. Wow. And like, for you, uh, it's a blank. What do you remember? You don't remember sixth season? The last season? No, I remember that Japanese, those two episodes being incredibly uh, painful, difficult, stressful. Cold. <laughs> no, I don't remember any of the other episodes that season. Really? Oh, what were they? I would um, if you rem reminded Heart me. Heart of Darkness. Gurkhan. Oh, really? That was the last season? Gurkhan I remember that quite, six, quite well. Yeah. The yeah. one where... Many um, Happy Returns. Many Happy Returns. Was this a uh, pony thing? Oh, no. no. What was that? That's where you, were, you went swimming. She had a black eye. It was a lot of practical jokes were going on. You read the Sappho poem the on Sappho the hillside. Poem at the end. Almost tossed the helmet uh, over the cliff. Uh, was Kevin Smith in that one? No, he was in uh, Soul Possession, which was oh maybe like third. Oh my God, I can't believe you remember. Remember that's when we were look like uh, clones. We were just that was yeah, really you easy. Were, you were naked that was such an easy right. episode. Yeah, we were in heaven because <laughs> you know there were so many people in the cast. There was very little for us to do on that yeah. episode, and we just got to sit and pretend like we're sleeping. I was wearing <laughs> Annie Annie clothes. It yep. was my favorite was costume. Yeah, yeah. That would have been easy. Drinking chocolate milkshakes and. Burping. Yeah, Kevin was in it a lot. <laughs> oh, you've been talking about Army Wives, and there seems to be some hinting going on in the recent interviews that you've done. That you're a big Lizzie? Uh, that yeah. Well, I'm not supposed to give that away. So I just have oh, all I can say okay. is that um, I'm a lady who uh, who um, befriends, one, befriends one of the Army Wives. Liz oh, befriends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Something I've never played before. I'm going to put it like that. And the, the scripts are not written yeah, up, right? So now we're just... So what do you guys... Um, anyone done any picketing? Anyone... Uh, I have not been out there What's yet. happening to the turmoil in Hollywood right now? I know the Xena yeah. fans are out there providing... I know the Xena yeah. fans are out there providing donuts and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are. Wow. Support. Yeah. I didn't know that. Surprising the heck out of the picketers. Because the only show that's supporting them is a show that's been off the air six years. They're sending out. Um, no way. Absolutely oh, yeah. way. Yes, There's they're not getting stuff from anyone else. Isn't that wonderful? They have yeah. a website. It's the uh, Mary D's website, an Australian uh -huh. website. And there's a PayPal button, and you can go in, you can donate. And then what they do is they take the Donate and the donut. Sunscreen. They put, yeah, yeah. water out there. And yeah. um, Catherine was just amazed because there were all these boxes arriving for her and Stephen Sears. And, it was from the Xenoverse. <laughs> and so she said... All this Unbelievable. I know, isn't it? She was so blown away. And then so she's telling all the writers within the guild, thank the Xenoverse. So people are coming up and they know nothing about... Oh, And they're saying, goodness. I want to thank the Xenoverse. You know what I mean? People are really starting to... Get out of town, yeah. really? Isn't it, aren't they amazing? And they're just, why... The show, your great. show's off the air. Why are they doing yeah. this for us? They appreciate... Wow. Isn't it nice? Yes. Fantastic. Your people, guys. Well, those, those <laughs> Thanks guys. for letting us be your people. I know. Isn't that really nice to organize that? It's incredible. Wow. It's really, uh, this is the amazing, just that they're a force for good. Yeah. Or, or for 
what they believe in, yeah. which is generally speaking a really good well, cause of sp said, spreading the love. You know, yeah, someone said it's funny because we seem to be better because of you guys, but then we also think that maybe you guys are getting better because of us. Not getting better, but I mean like you even go out again and try to be even more generous, or you push ahead and you keep finding new ways to, to keep it going, you know what I mean? Right. Like you're creating music and then in bringing everybody into your world, you know, it just seems to reciprocate yeah. um, each other in the generosity. Like look at the Kevin Smith. That's unbelievable. The, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I was, my parents have moved out here, so I'm thinking a bit about childhood, you know, having my parents around more than I, than mm -hmm. I used to. And uh, you recently performed at the Young Storytellers Foundation. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How, how did that Hi. come back? Um, you, uh... That's right, I forgot to tell you about that because it was a very last minute thing. The woman who used to be my nanny and is now a uh, social worker, so she's an incredible young woman too. Her boyfriend is one of the guys who uh, runs Young Storytellers, so they're trying to sort of um, encourage that, that, uh, that spark in children to tell stories and and be script writers, though I hope they're not writing during the strike. Uh -oh. But I was trying to support the young writers. <laughs> I took them a donut each, um, and they have once a year they have professional actors come and read the kids' scripts at somebody's house. Oh, great! So um, Amy and Bill asked me if I would come and uh, do it, and I said, and I was like, oh yeah, okay. Oh, actually, it was really fun. This little girl, I'm afraid I don't remember her name, wrote a story, The Mystery of the Voice of Elmo. <laughs> and there was another story. And they're about f f five, seven pages long, I don't know. And uh, everybody, there was Tate Donovan, a whole lot of actors who you would know if you watch network drama, but I don't know because I don't, you know. <laughs> um, but wonderful young people. Yeah. Ben from the OC, I, he was somebody I got to know a bit. Um, Anyway, they came down and they wanted to do those ice-breaking games, you know, where you repeat a pattern or something. And I came to it late because I was trying to cadge a drink off somebody. And I was like, what? oh, we well, better get over there with the actors. And I came to it late, so I was a bit behind the eight ball. And, and it's a group of actors trying and to they're warm going, up? Well, they're doing all sorts of warm-up oh. games, and they're all, like, into it, jolly hockey sticks. And I'm like, what, what? And then you've got to go boom, chocka, locka, locka, a whick, 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 or whatever, right? And I'm like, oh, what is this? And then this kid goes, and you. And then I'm into it, I'm ah! boom, chuck, I'm like, what? And I'm trying to be like cool and hip and down with it, you know, but I'm like so lame at it. And the kids are observing us. Oh, no. I didn't realize they were observing us to see who they want to cast. Oh, oh, so wow. in the end, like really? nobody wanted to cast, you know, the kids were giving out all their pieces of paper to the, you know, to the pretty girl, oh. whatever her name was, who was like really, you know, she was quite slinky, really pretty, nice, nice young woman, whoever the hell she was. <laughs> and so she got a couple, everybody else. And at the end, it's me and somebody else. I'm going, this is hysterical that That's... I cannot get cast in Hollywood <laughs> by a bloody eight-year-old, you know? <laughs> so, oh, so eventually this kid's standing there and I'm going, have you got a dog role? She goes, no, 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 all the dogs are gone. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh. What about a fat man? I would like to play a fat man. Like, no, I'm just being ridiculous, right? And she mean? goes, eventually she's like stuck and I'm the only person. She goes, oh, do you want to play the part of the principal? Oh, yes, I want to be the principal. Thank you. So, wow. so she's like, gives me the principal role. I'm playing the principal of the school, <laughs> Mrs. Goulart, spelled gullet. And who turned out to be a real person. She was actually there, gullet. So you is saying her name wrong. And it turns out to be like the main role, right? The title of the mystery of the voice of Elmo. So these kids go to the Elmo show on Broadway and they, and they come out going, gee, I wonder who plays the voice of Elmo? And they, let's Google it up. So when they get home, they Google it up and it comes up, Anita Goulart or something. <laughs> and hey, that sounds like our principal's name. Let's sneak around by and try to find out what her first name is. So at school the next day, another teacher wow. says, hey, Anita, I'm sorry, I'm going to be late to that teacher's meeting after school. No trouble, says I. Well... Because my character is the voice of Elmo, of course, I start playing her totally with the voice of Elmo from the oh start. Like, my I'm like, gosh. and the kids come and say, Mrs. Gula, yeah, Mrs. Gula, <laughs> everybody, we know that you secretly played the voice of Elmo. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> we not play Elmo. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like, 
like, and, and so all, it, all like the, it, the audience loved it because they were grown ups and they just yeah, thought it was yeah, funny yeah, that yeah, I would yeah. even know because yeah. they see you get given the role and you've had no practice or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They just are amazed that you know the voice of Elmo, right? Yeah. And but the kid was going, oh, no. like, oh, like, no. look, she's ruining. She's if you talk like this, everybody would know you were Elmo. <laughs> That is so right, but I'm just being a fool. Funny. And um, anyway, I had that a great so time, but the oh. poor, as writers often are, would be are horrified at what I do to their words. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That is so funny. Um, what a great time. No. Me not. Yeah, oh, me that. not play the voice of Elmo. <laughs> you know? I'm just a little kid. Yeah. Ah. Oh my oh gosh, that is funny. Miscast. Oh boy, Perfectly oh that's great. Well, she should have given me the dog roll. <laughs> <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> yeah. No oh accent. Hey, you have said that you use music to help you find a character, especially when you don't have much time to prepare. Can you give us an example and what music then? I'm trying to think. I think it might be an emotional connection to the character. That's what I'm thinking. Except nothing comes out of, you know, <laughs> no inspiration on the story. I don't know, but it must just be... Uh, Probably the tone of the piece or the tone of the character. Uh, maybe even um, the words or the, the, the voice of the musician. It could be that sort of thing. Do you have to pick the artist for the character or is it just something that strikes you? Um, I think it just if I run across something. For instance, okay, here's, an, uh, here's a story. Uh, for one week in a month, it was just such a raw angry character and it was actually Eric's idea the director to listen to Liz Fair I'm what? Liz who you know I don't know who she is do you know her stuff P-H-A-I-R right yeah she is intense name, yeah. and angry so angry and that's what he wanted so I was like oh okay and I started listening to her and I just I understood what he meant so then I asked another friend who is um, more fluent in different artists to make a compilation of music for me I told her what I was looking for so she gave me some stuff and I just used I used that to get that that um, feeling, you know, just keep it, keep to sustain the feeling, really. The yeah, in you. it keeps uh -huh. me going. Yeah, yeah, it's good. You also Hopefully. said, uh, might have even been the same interview, that you love, you love the raw emotion of acting. Can you think of the rawest moment for you on Xena? Either both of you? I know what hers is. You do? Yeah. What? That cannibal one. Oh. I wouldn't have thought, oh, that was pretty raw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sense where I felt like if I said anything, I was going to lose My control. My shit. I was going to yeah. lose control of, of like, because you got to be professional. You got to do your job. You know, you're here to do a job. And there was, there was so much anger in that that I just was like, <gasps> but, but my most raw, what I was thinking with you is um, when you were in the, um, the water and you had that <laughs> one piece around your neck. Mm, you know scary. what I mean? Yeah, that was. And just to have that sense of there's dialogue and then there's emotion. There's no, there's no hesitation. It's just complete connection to the material and to the situation. That's what it came to my mind at first, especially working with someone else, where the cannibal thing was just my in my head going. That, that, right. Yeah, that wouldn't have occurred to me as the rawest, though that was certainly similar in that if I had have given an inch, I would have lost my really? business. Yeah. Oh. Because it was so heavy, I was so, and everybody's like yeah. totally casual, you know, having their cigarettes, and oh, yeah, should we film it? And I'm sitting there with this, like, 20 oh. pounds of wood on my head oh. that's really wildly uncomfortable. And there are other people, the only, you particularly don't want to be a brat because there's other people in the water with you. And I think the ones they had on them weren't they so were, heavy, they, they were, were like styrofoam. foam ones or yeah. something, styrofoams, but. You just had to look real. <laughs> And it was blood, yeah, and it was really miserably heavy. The other times that was hard to keep wow. it together was, yeah, in water. Often it was the water, water ones, right? In water and cold, when we and were wet and cold. And the thing about that is that you couldn't do anything. You couldn't use your arms. You couldn't take it off. You know what I mean? Like you were sort of trapped in this thing. Your body was trapped. And I think that's how I felt with the cannibal. You know, my arms were tied. I had all I these I feel strangers. sometimes a little bit mad now when I look back yeah. and I go, you know what? Yeah. There is no, it's kind of what you said before, I'm afraid is true. I do not think that anybody puts up with that level of discomfort and stuff in America ever. Not that I've seen. I mean, they don't bloody tolerate 
having to walk 50 feet to the bathroom, yeah. right. let alone lying being crucified half naked in the <laughs> middle of winter. You have to laugh. Regularly. You, wonder how you have to laugh. And, and yes, but every case, now I'm I think of it and I just go, oh, that was wrong, man. That was unfair. But you know what? It didn't, at the time, it felt like we were we serving just, We the did not know any better. Yeah. I was say. We were serving the material, though. Yeah, but the you know more I mean? we did, the more they could write. Oh, instead of just because saying Because no, you and I didn't know any better, and we, we were tough enough chicks to, yeah. like, suck it up. Yeah, you just That's great, it. but it's like, I don't want to remember, to be honest with you. Relatively new. Yeah. I don't think it was doing. that. I don't think that if, like, if they asked us to do that now, if they asked us to go back and not go back, but we wanted you to be in these roles and we want you to do it right now, would you say no? Would you say, no, I will not be crucified yes. at all, period? Yeah. Really? I don't think I would. I would be like, oh, if it serves what the script needs, I would do it. I would probably have a different feeling about it, but isn't that funny? I would. No interest. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a feeling when you say, would you do it again? Basically, what you're envisioning is six more years. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's, what I, that's why I've never oh. signed on to. Right. No, I'm talking about, say, there was, let's just say just in this say world that there was a Xena movie and you had to be crucified. Would you do it? Would you oh, do yes. A, I would say there was, let's just say in just this say world that shot. there was a Xena movie and you had to be crucified. Would you do it? Would you oh, do yes. A, I would, actually. That's I funny. would. I figured you would. Because you would just do yeah, it. And, yeah, and also, it's mind over matter now. You know, like, I'm a much yeah. calmer person. I'm not... I see it just for the gig that it, it is. Yeah, I just don't... I think I had a sense of religion about what I did before. At least you did. At least you committed to it. You know what I mean? Cause that's if you right. Had, done anything, I want to say half, in a half way manner, it wouldn't have sold. You wouldn't have been the person you were. The character wouldn't have come across like it did. You know? That's right. And I am, so yeah. at that moment, that was really important for sure. It could only have happened there. That's right. That's like, oh, it could only have happened at that time. Yeah, I suppose if you hadn't done it the way you did, people wouldn't be delivering water to the picketers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That kind Maybe of that's <laughs> the difference, eh? Maybe that's why you spent six years on Xena. So the picketers outside the Buena Vista Disney <laughs> water would have sunscreen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the that's domino nice. effect. Yeah. Um, at the last Burbank convention, Renee, you talked about um, being at the Roxy. You said, I had a great time last night just sitting back and watching Lucy. I can see why you guys love her so much. You said you could see the love from Lucy to the fans and from the fans to Lucy. And then you started to cry. Do you remember doing that and why yeah. it got you so emotional? Oh, it's just so moving, you know. It's, um, I'm so proud of you being up there, for one, <laughs> seriously. You know, and I just, oh, you know, I think that's wonderfully courageous. And, and it's just so fun to see you have this dream, whether it be for right now or whenever or however long, and to bring it out there and share it with everybody. I loved that, you know, it was so fun to watch you go for it. And then, um, and to see the, the fans that were there just um, love you that much too, you know, it was just so fun. They like were all united in this wonderful moment. So, and it's because you stepped up to do it. I thought that was cool. Does love make you emotional? Well, I, I'm, love, everything, everything makes me feel sensitive, you know. Yeah. I think I'm very compassionate and, yeah. Well, you talked to, you know, thing. you just did a, an, <laughs> an online interview and you said you had yeah. a colorful childhood and you also yeah. mentioned in Chicago, I think it was, that there was some, you know, there was some abuse in the family yes. and what have you. And uh, I don't know, has that made it harder or easier for you to be open as a person, as an actor? Um, I think I've just, this last year, I started to realize that if I can own up to who I am, that gets me upset, that I can be a better person. I feel like I'm a Barbara Walter. <laughs> so, Barbara Walter. Wait a minute, I don't do anyway, things like that. Anyway, so what I want to say is, yeah, the more I can share, yeah. the more I get to, um, wow, live this yeah. really great life. And what's good about it is just not being so emotional about it, really, even though I am right now. Usually I'm not. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe because you're with your butts. <laughs> so I think, I think Rim was very buttoned down for a long time, right? You were very yeah. keeping a lid on everything. Well, you have to. And now you're allow, able to yeah. like let it up a little bit and, well, and, and allow these things to yeah. express, because otherwise it's impressed in you. But I expressed it in my acting. I always knew what I was doing as an actor, but you know, you let the demons come out, you know, and you express yourself. 
And that always worked for me, which was so great about Xena, you know. There were so many ways to explore different feelings, you know. But, um, so I always knew that. But to actually share stories with people was a whole other thing, because you're so ashamed, mm. you know. And to, not, and to go, why? Why am I ashamed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I am, though. It's really cool. And I'm writing about it. Oh, my gosh. It's so incredible. Yeah. I had these wild, I had such a wild life. You have no idea. No one has any idea, really, what it was, this world I was in. So bizarre. But I'm starting to write about it. And the more I write about it, the more I realize how absolutely ridiculous it was and that we lived this life and that people, it's so ridiculous. It's like J.R. Hewing, you know, lived, was our, the man who run our, our, our world. J.R. Hewing. Mm -hmm. It was like, I swear, it was like this Texan, crazy, crazy man, you know? And I'm, it's so absurd to me that he got away with it and that we all had to be dragged along the way and no one did anything. It's so amazing to me. So I'm starting to write about that. Keeping like, up appearances. Of, yeah, and, yeah, that's what it was all about. You know, we were basically the appearance of a normal family. Right. So even as a young kid, I, I had the insight to know this was wrong, but I had no voice to say, what the hell, you know, what can we do about it? But now I do have the voice. This is all so new for me, so I'm just gonna see where it goes. And mm. Yeah, we'll see. Because there's nothing to f f fear no, by um, letting it out, right? When you're a kid, you feel like you have to... You think you're gonna be punished. Yeah, that you're, something so terrible yeah. is gonna happen if you even admit something to yourself. Yeah. So anyway, it's good. It is. It good. is very good. I don't good. normally it's get emotional good. about it because I'm because it's it's uh, it is what it is, you know. And, and I realized that if I didn't live the childhood I had, I wouldn't be on the TV show I was on. I wouldn't have the ability to have the exposure I have to let other people know, you know, have faith. And you know, touch people the way I you can help them. Yeah. Through that. But it's taken me a while to get there. Yeah. So the answer to your question is yes. I was closed off because I didn't want people to hear all the bad stuff, you know. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, well, that's life. I'm, you know, it is what it is. So. <laughs> but he had yeah. crazy brothers when they were growing up. And so, you know, you had five older brothers, right? Five Four older brothers. Four and older brothers, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, being the, the girl in the, in the family can be, a, you know, it can be teasing. And there were, you know, some, quite some age differences. And I wondered if that affected uh, kind of the way you look at the male of the species as you, when you were a kid. No, I went out um, with Marissa yesterday and we were canvassing around like frat houses, around the university oh. campuses. Um, and she was terrified. She'd go, oh, no, I don't, don't give him one of these flyers where uh, um, I get a bad feeling about him. So I, and I'd go... Hey, dude, blah, 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 start to, and he would, you know, smile, and he was totally human, mm -hmm. but I realized that some people are very, very, just deathly afraid of strangers, and these are not, it's not like, I mean, this person could be her brother, mm -hmm. sort of thing, same, same ethnicity, but just a stranger, mm -hmm. and um, I, I'm not afraid of your of men at all, because I've had so much exposure to them, good and bad and whatever. So you think it made you stronger and more? No, no, I'm not, I'm not prejudiced against, against them, put it that way, I'm not, right. not afraid of them. I'm, right. um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have a chip on my shoulder about men. Mm -hmm. I, uh, all women, I just, you kind of see the human being behind, I don't care what their gender is. I don't care what they, who they sleep with, I don't care. <laughs> Don's not my daughter. Um. <laughs> Rob was asked recently, uh, in answer to, uh, Rob answered recently in how close you guys are to your characters, that Renee is probably more like the character that Gabrielle became. I also suspect, and perhaps he was looking at your socks, that Renee is wilder than Gabrielle, but that is just speculation, Rob said. My socks. <laughs> no, oh, those socks, socks aren't well. No, they're wild. Well, that's, 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 her, that's her face side. She's she's also quite girly. Yeah, I like uh, colorful socks in any way. No, but 
what is he talking about? My belly button ring? What is he talking about? Or that I, I like to dance on stage? Do you have a belly button ring? <laughs> perhaps you're wilder than people. Think. I've told him. Probably. I don't know. You told him. You gave it away. I told him. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's def I'm sure that's true. Yeah. I don't think Gabrielle was. But I'm sorry. She's an well, they're awesome, awesome characters, and they've been on television for a long time, six years, to develop. But it's still a television character, so a human being is always going to be more complex and infinite. <laughs> Though I guess the reason that um, Gabrielle and Zena are, have some sort of infinite possibilities is because it's in the imagination of the audience. Right. But no writer can write, can capture the essence of Renee. Well, they, they can only suggest certain things for the character. Well, they might have ideas of a backstory, but I guess you then, you know what I mean? I know some writers will write a whole treatment just on a character development. You know, sometimes that happens, but um, I know what you're saying, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that was just my other. <laughs> but you still have to bring the essence to life. The soul has to come out, right? That's what you're saying, yeah. I know what you're saying, I'm just, blah. That's right, <laughs> yeah, me too. I was just thinking, <laughs> I've lost the thread of what we're talking about. Yeah, I am not oh, that thought's gone, I'm next. Right. last peaceful <laughs> Sorry. Thought here. Uh, which caught my attention. You said um, in that inter online interview that I, I feel a sense of grounding in the desert where there aren't any people. Hmm. Do you want to explain more about that? Yeah, I I'm just, I loved Egypt. I loved Israel. I'll never forget being in the Dead Sea, looking out over the mountains and just feeling such a sense of peace and serenity. So when I think of, of like what's a, the most expansive I can feel outside my body, I think of the desert. I don't know why, but I love that. Mm. And where's your most peaceful place, Lucy? Um, I'm pretty peaceful, right? This yeah, you are. It, <laughs> these days, I mean, I just power down wherever I am. And <laughs> I'm okay. Funny. Except inside your exciting closet, right? Hey? Have you shown Renee the no. closet in here? I come in, she's got this, you know, great house here and she says to me you gotta see the closet <laughs> so I open the door and it's a room <laughs> and she's just giggling like a little it's outrageous but you're really peaceful now just hanging out with your family I mean yeah yeah it's really great I've stopped thinking that I can't live without the acting or yeah. the money or the fame or whatever mm -hmm. it is none of that stuff is um, None of that is, is real. In fact, that will get in your way of being happy and yeah. being peaceful. Is if you think that without these things, you yeah. can't exist without a certain job, without a certain person. When you realize, oh, no, I actually don't need any of that to be happy, then um, yeah, your natural state is peaceful and free yeah. and, and um, joyous. It's your natural state. And you're, one of your natural states at the moment is running around college campuses, as you said, with your oh, yeah. yeah, asking people questions. Well, you've yeah. got someone here. Yeah, well, uh, I was going to uh, ask you, Renee. <laughs> Renee. <laughs> Uh-oh. So, <laughs> hooking up with a much older partner, what's so wrong with that? <laughs> Have you ever, uh, you know, dated somebody much older? Or much younger than yourself? Uh, Would you? 